In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So as to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You have come to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Kings. Ahab sent to all the children of Israel and had the prophets assemble on Mount Carmel. Elijah appealed to all the people and said, How long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elijah said to the people, I am the only surviving prophet of the Lord. And there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls. Let them choose one, cut it into pieces, and place it on the wood. But start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood. But shall start no fire. You shall call on your gods, and I will call on the Lord. The God who answers with fire is God. All the people answered, Agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one young bull and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call upon your gods, but do not start the fire, taking the young bull that was turned over to them. They prepared it and called on Baal from morning to noon, saying, Answer us, Baal. But there was no sound and no one answering, and they hopped around the altar they had prepared. When it was noon, Elijah taunted them, Call louder, for he is a god and may be meditating, or may have retired, or may be on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. They called out louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until blood gushed over them. Noon passed, and they remained in a prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifice. But there was not a sound. No one answered, and no one, no one was listening. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. When the people had done so, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been destroyed. He took twelve stones for the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, Your name shall be Israel. He built an altar in honor of the Lord with stones, and made a trench around the altar, large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood. Fill four jars with water, he said, and pour it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. The water flowed from the altar, and the trench was filled with the water. At the time for offering sacrifice, the prophet Elijah came forward and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me that this people may know that you, Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to their senses. The Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, wood, stones, and dust, and it lapped up the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The word of the Lord. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. 
Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. They multiply their sorrows, who court other gods, blood libations to them. I will not pour out, nor will I take their names upon my lips. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. O Lord, my allotted portion and cup, you it is who fast my lot. I set the Lord even before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law, until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, uh, Jesus Christ reiterates the fact that he's not here to abolish anything of the old, uh, the prophets, the law. In fact, he's here to fulfill. He's here to live it out. Um, and that's very important for us as Christians because a lot of the things that we learn as Christian tenets, they're not something that was uh, uh, created out of thin air. There was a, an old tradition of following the law, the prophets, now, what Jesus Christ was doing is to take the law and the prophets. It, um, uh, him taking the law and the prophets uh, to share that with the people he's evangelizing to. And now, of course, Christ takes it further by fulfilling the resurrection. You know, um, uh, there were a lot of uh, false prophets during the time of Christ. Uh, and a lot of these false prophets were uh, basically claiming that they are the Son of God or they are the healer and so on and so forth. According to the Law and the Prophets, the one who's, who is to come is, uh, will not only fulfill all the things that was predicted, but also uh, be the one to be resurrected after, the, uh, after his death. That part is very important. Um, the resurrection uh, is so important to our faith that uh, in many ways theologians will say that we are uh, Easter Christians. We are resurrected Christians. Uh, we follow uh, the theology of resurrection. Now it's interesting because in the first reading uh, Elijah deals with all the false prophets all the false prophets of Baal, uh, I think it said the number was 450, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, 450 prophets of Baal. Um, now, Elijah had uh, a lot of opponents, a lot of, uh, a lot of guys to work against. And Elijah calls upon God um, for the people to witness. But Elijah does it in a way that everything is nature-based, you know, stone, water, you know, the elements. Um, it's very interesting. If you read the story of the Old Testament, they're very, very keen on nature. Um, what makes that story so fascinating is that Elijah is by himself, and he is trying to convince Israel that, look, you have forgotten God. Let me prove to you why God, why Yahweh is the authentic Lord. And Elijah does. Elijah puts all his trust in God 
And when that miracle, the fire has, uh, has been done, everyone starts saying, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. In that same fashion, Jesus Christ is doing the same thing to the people, uh, the people of Israel. There's this repetitive history of the prophets constantly reminding Israel that the Lord is God. And Christ is doing that today. On this day, Jesus is reminding us that he is here to fulfill the law and to fulfill what the prophets predicted. That's good news to us because it proves that Christ is the Son of God. He is uh, our Lord and Savior. And Christ is our Lord and Savior because he teaches us love, that divine love that, uh, that we have forgotten about, that Israel has forgotten about, uh, according to the scriptures. Christ is here to remind us of this divine love, and that is what saves us, uh, the divine love of God that we take and we share to our fellow man. So... Let us now offer our prayers as we think about and meditate on the love of God. We pray for all our leaders, our president, our governor, our mayor, uh, for the big decisions that they will be making in the next phase of reopening our state, uh, reopening our country, um, that we may still be safe uh, during this time of the pandemic. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for all those uh, involved in the protests, uh, for all victims of violence, for all those uh, uh, suffering with the fact that, uh, that their stores have been destroyed during the riots, that, that our people in our country will go towards peaceful protests. Uh, without the violence, and to, uh, to make a difference in uh, showing how peaceful movements, peaceful protests are done uh, in the same love and peace of Christ. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To ending of all violence, uh, violence against mankind, violence against each other, violence against my brother and sister, um, that in the place of violence, that the love of Christ is embedded in us. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for any special intentions we may have, let us pray in the silence of our hearts. Special prayers go out to Bruce John Millen. Lord, we give you thanks and praise on this day as we celebrate the Eucharist, uh, which you taught us through the Eucharist how to love one another. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, all the clergy and all those who serve. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace.